right, so this is a code about uh, how to build a Caesar, Caesar cipher in Python. Um, so Caesar cipher is a very basic form of cryptography. It allows you to encode a uh, form of text by using a shifted alphabet. Uh, what I mean by shifted alphabet is basically if you have A through Z as your original alphabet, a shifted alphabet, by, if you shift it by one, would start with B rather than A, and it would end in A rather than Z. So we shifted it by one. We've moved A to the end, started on B. That would be a you know Caesar shift of one. So in order to do this, there's a few steps. Uh, first, we're going to import a couple libraries. Uh, the first is a pretty common one. It's just going to be NumPy, and we're importing it by convention as NP, meaning every time I type NP, uh, I'm going to be referencing the NumPy library. And that's important because I'm going to actually want to build an array. NumPy allows me to do that. Uh, the next library is less common. It's called Enchant. And what Enchant has is this wonderful feature that allows me to check if a string of characters is in a certain dictionary. In this case, the US English dictionary, the English US dictionary. So I'm going to import those libraries. I'm going to go ahead and call Enchant. And using their dict function, I get to set which uh, dictionary I want. That's the English US. I'm going to save it as D for dictionary. The next line is going to give me my original text. This is the code or the message that I'm wanting to encode. So that very basic, it just tells me this is a code. It is a Caesar cipher, which replaces all. This little backslash gives me a new line without messing up the string. Letters with letters spaced a set number away from the original. Then I'm going to take that string and I'm going to break it down into a list of um, characters. So let's go ahead and run that. What I mean by breaking this string into a list of characters is this. So instead of having this is a code, etc., I have this is a code, and it's giving me every single letter, every single space, every single punctuation even, which is important because we're going to have to, have to reference those punctuations and white space shortly. It is important to note that we took all lowercase because if there is a difference in case, um, you could have some trouble with that. So instead of getting, we got rid of all the capital values and just set everything to lowercase to play it safe. Next, I want to build my alphabet. So I just have A through Z in a string. You could do a list of each uh, individual letter, but this is a little bit faster to work with. And the code below actually deals with this. So it's, it may be worthwhile keeping that. Then we have a Caesar shift. I actually wrote case shift in this case, but we're shifting the alphabet by 12. So instead of starting at A, we're actually going to start at M, I believe. And this could be any value at all, um, but we're going to go ahead and shift by that. So I'll go ahead and run that. And then I'm going to create a few functions. And initially, this code was definitely not as clean. It didn't rely on any functions. It was line by line trying to make it work. Once I got it working, I, I cleaned it up a little bit to make some functions that I could just call and, and simplify some things. Um, the first one I'm going to do is called create dict. This is to create a dictionary. And the dictionary is actually going to be a reference. It's going to have our, our original alphabet, A through Z. And each letter is, or each character is going to be tied to the shifted alphabet. So in order to do this, I have to input the initial alphabet, and I also have to put the specific shift I'm going to be working with. Then I take my alphabet and I split it into a list, just like we did with the text here. So each letter gets its own item in the list. And I create a start and an end for my shifted alphabet. And it's fairly easy to do. You just take your alphabet, um, and you're going to start at the beginning. That's dot, dot and then you end at your shift value. And then the end would be the opposite. You're gonna start at your shift value and you're gonna to go to the end. What I need to do is reverse those. I'm gonna I'm going to create a list where I'm, I now have the end at the beginning and I have the start at the end. So going back uh, here, when I referenced um, starting with a shift of one, you initially would have started with A, you shift it by one, so instead you start with B. A then goes to the end. So that's why I'm taking these and flipping them. That first piece is going to go to the end. The second piece is going to go to the beginning. And then you have this, then we're going to create a dictionary combining the original alphabet and that shifted alphabet. To do that, you call dict. That allows you to create the dictionary. And then this zip function actually allows you to take two lists and put them into a single um, dictionary. So the first uh, item would be the values, or excuse me, the keys. And the second item would be the values. Uh, and it's going to return both the characters and the dictionary. So I'll go ahead and call that. This is what it looks like. My keys are listed in the first column. My values are listed in the second column. And you can see every time you see A, it would be transferred into an M. Every time you see B, it would be transferred into an N. So that's the basic idea of this shift here. 
Okay, the next thing we're going to do is actually encode the sentence. We have the dictionary, we have kind of our, our starting point. Now we actually have to build, rebuild the original text into the encoded text. What this is going to take is the original text, the text list, uh, and the alpha, the new dictionary. So the text list, again, remember it's going to be an itemized list of characters. It's not going to be the original string. Uh, and then the dictionary is going to be um, this dictionary here. We have the original and you have the shift. So we're going to create an empty cipher code. We're going to build on that. So we need to start with something uh, empty. I'm going to go through every character of the text list. We're going to check if it's alphabetic. That's this dot is alpha. And if it is, we're going to reference the dictionary at that character. So the first character is going to be T. We're going to go to our alphabet. We're going to find T. That's you know the alphabet at that character. And we're going to award the value of F. And we're going to put that to, or we're going to pin that to our cipher code. If it's not alphabetic, we don't have to worry about the dictionary. We just have to put that character. So if we pass a space or a period, we're just going to put that in where it goes. And so that gives us the cipher code, but that's going to be this you know item by item list. We also want the full sentence. So in order to do that, we create an empty string. And then we have this wonderful join feature for a list, which allows us to join all of the items of cipher code into cipher words. And then we're going to output both. So let's see what that looks like. So cipher words is going to give this lovely sentence. Instead of saying this is a code, it has F-T-U-E space U-E space M, uh, etc. If I look at cipher code, which again is just going to be the itemized list of things. So you can pull in there. And I'm going to go back to word there. So the next thing we're going to want to do, so we've now encoded it, but now we're actually going to have to utilize a few things in our decoding, right? So I could, I've encoded my message, it's all well and good, but now I need to send it to somebody and they need to be able to uh, decode it. Or maybe I've intercepted it and I want to decode it. So we're going to create this function called count words. What this is going to enable me to do is I'm going to actually go through each shift that I can. So I'm going to try to decode this message using zero shifts. So I want to just see if my computer can read that. You know, A for A. Um, and I want to count how many words exist in this sentence. Ironically, this letter M is counted as a word in the library, in the dictionary. I'm not sure why. Um, so it will count those, but all the other ones will be disregarded. And then I'm going to shift my attempt by one. So, so every A will be swapped for a B. And I'm going to check. And then I'm, every, I'm going to shift it by two, and every A will be swapped with a C, and I'm going to check. And every time I'm going to go through this, I'm going to check how many words there are, and I'm going to make a list. And then the one that has the most words in it, arguably, should be the correct shift. So this count words is going to allow me to kind of record that. The first thing going in, I want the words going in. So in this case, it'll be each one of these little sections of words. Technically, it's going to be coming from, I think, the cipher code. No, no, it'll be coming from the, the words here. Then I'm going to import a score. The score is actually going to be a dictionary where the, val the key is going to be the number shifted and the value is going to be the count for the number of words. I'm going to have an index that's going to be you know, utilized just very simply to associate these correctly. And then I'm going to utilize a temporary score. The temporary score will allow me to add it in and kind of rebuild on that as I go through iterations of this. When I go to count words, the first thing I'm going to do is take all my words and I'm going to split them in all the spaces. So I take all this and I split every one of them in a space. That does mean that some of these will have a punctuation mark here. If I drop down, I'm going to go through each of these words, so each little section of letters or characters, and I'm going to check to see if they're alphabetic. If they're alphabetic, great. If they have a period in them, not great. But if they're alphabetic, I'm going to use that enchant library. Remember, that's the D dictionary I had listed up here in the English US. Let's see, where are we? And I'm going to check to see if the word listed is a word in the dictionary. If it is, my temporary score goes up by one, and I associate that score to the index of the score. So the index being the shift that I've gone through, and the score being however many words are checked here. So if I have three words that check out, uh, check out during this, it'll be listed as three. And then I'll go ahead and return the score. So we're going to look at that in just a moment. We can't see it just yet. 
This next step is just kind of setting up some things. So I need to see how many iterations I'm going to have. Since it's the English alphabet, I'm going to go through 26 shifts. If I go through another one, it's going to just revert back to the starting one. Um, I'm going to create a list of keys that I'm going to use for the score. That's just simply going to be 0 to 25. That means 0 shifts, that would be A for A. 25 shifts would be A for Z. If I went 26 shifts, it would be back at A for A. Um, and then I'm going to build a score dictionary. So that's going to look like this. Dictionary has this nice function called dot from keys, and it just allows you to put in um, your list of keys uh, all in all uh, in, in one, one step. Notice though my values are all listed as none, so those are going to be populated pretty soon here. The next thing I'm going to do is create my shift, my starting shift value. I'm going to set it to zero, and my temporary score I'm going to set to zero. I think temporary score is already automatic, but I'm going to go ahead and set it in there anyway. And now comes the beef. So now we're actually going to figure out the scores of each one of our iterations here. Again, we create a function here. I put in my alphabet, uh, my, my list of letters here. I put in my shift. In this case, my shift's going to be zero. I put in my cipher code. So the cipher code is going to be, I think it's listed as zero. Let's see. We'll find out very soon here. I think it just is going to equal empty. There we go. Um, put in my number of iterations, and I put in my score. And again, score is going to be empty at the moment. As we go through this, let me see if I can run it. Let's see. There we go. I think we're good. Um, as we go through this, what it's going to do is go for the index. So remember, uh, the in, or excuse me, go through the number of iterations. The IDX is going to be any one of those iterations. So in this case, it's going to start at zero and it's going to go all the way up to 25. And again, I just went um, through this aspect here. I could have actually just called it keys uh, since I've already done that. I'm going to create an empty text decipher. What that's going to allow me to do is actually build that out. So we're going to just add to it slowly but surely. And I'm going to create, I'm going to start calling my, my functions. So the first function I'm going to call is create dictionary. What I'm going to do is pull in the initial alphabet. And I'm going to pull in a shift of zero, and that's going to be my dictionary. So this is going to be, say, say, A through Z, and then in the value, or the keys, it's going to say A through Z in the values as well. As we go through, it's going to spit out the alphabet characters and the new decipher dictionary. I'm going to then put in the cipher code which was listed, let's see, where is my cipher code? Okay, right here. So my cipher code is actually the text that was encoded, right? So I'm gonna put in my cipher code, I'm gonna put in my, uh, my new dictionary, which in this case is just A for A, B for B, C for C, nothing exciting, and it's gonna spit out a new code and new words, and it's going to test that. I'm going to count the words. I'm going to put in the new words, the score, and the index. And then once it spits that out, I'm going to move the shift by minus one. So when we encoded, we actually counted forward by 12 since we came up here. Let's see here. Since we had a K shift of 12, we actually went forward by 12. Since I'm reverting back, I want to actually go backwards. Uh, if you go forwards, you'll get the right answer, uh, but it'll be a different shift because you're actually going through A through Z, but think of it as like a circle. So we'd actually extend beyond Z and we'd wrap back around. So what I want to do is go backwards on this. So we're going to move that shift by negative one, and we're going to go through that all the iterations. That's going to be giving me a score over and over and over and over, and I'm going to get a score filled out in each one of these items here. Then... I want to find the biggest score. So I'm just going to go into the values, find the maximum, and then whatever that maximum is, I'm going to find the actual shift as that index. So if the maximum, it should be listed at 12, right? 12 was the one we selected. So that should be the maximum. And it's going to, if I'm going to figure out what that maximum is, and it's going to tell me what that shift value is. And then what it's going to do is give me a final dictionary. That final dictionary, so it's, the final dictionary is going to be the, the, should be the dictionary that we had at the very beginning. Let's see, let's move back up right here. 
but it's going to be inverted because we're going backwards. So instead of having the keys as A through Z, the keys are going to be M through L, and then the values are going to be A through Z. So if I come back here, let's go ahead and run it. There we go. And then finally, we're going to go back to encode sentence. This is the exact same function that we use to actually encode the sentence, but we're going to use that same thing to decode it. We're going to use the cipher code, and instead of putting in the original, the any other alphabet, we're putting in that final dictionary. So let's go ahead and figure that out. And if we run that, here is our final output. This is a code. It is a Caesar cipher, which replaces all letters with letters spaced a set number away from the original. So ta-da, we've done it. Again, the big catch here is at the very end, you spit out your score. You find that maximum value of the score. You get an actual shift, and you get a final dictionary. So if we were to print these out, here's our score. At zero shifts, we had three words. At one shift, we had four. At two shifts, we had four. All of them are pretty close to one another until you get to 12. 12 has 20 words in it. So clearly, that one seems to be the most correct uh, as far as this goes. If we go to the sh uh, actual shift, which was oops, which was listed as an output on our uh, on our function there, we'll get an, an actual shift of 12. That's the one we used. Everything's great. And then finally, our final dictionary is the exact opposite of what we had previously. We had A through Z as the key and we had M through L as the values. We flip that because we're going from the encoded message back to the decoded message. And at the start, we went from the original message to an encoded message. So you just have to remember to flip those. Anyway, I know that was fairly complex as we went through it, um, but I hope that was at least interesting to y'all. Uh, I bet there's a faster way to do this. I'm, I'm sure there might even be a library for it. Um, but I hope it was useful, and I hope this uh, mentioning of the Enchant Library um, was of interest to you all as well.